Okay. Anyways, I'm going to hop on here. So I really have felt compelled to talk about this and it's been um, taking me some time to uh, just get this, get this stuff together and speak about this and everything. And so I'm like, okay, now is the time. Now is the time to talk about this. And so I was listening to a sermon by uh, Ron Carpenter and he was talking about this amazing ordeal of eagles. And I don't know how many of you guys are animal loving people, but if you're animal loving people, give me a thumbs up. Um, if you guys know anything about eagles or birds, great. If not, let me tell you this crazy, insane ordeal that eagles do. And what's awesome is that eagles are, in the Bible, you'll hear about us being like eagles. Like you'll, you'll hear about eagles a whole lot in the Bible if you read it. If you don't, no worries. But let me tell you about an amazing ordeal with eagles, okay? This is female eagles, all right? So a female eagle, once there are like, you know, there's a few different male eagles that are seeking this female eagle, this female eagle will go and take a pebble or a stick and fly up and drop the pebble. And a male eagle will come swooping in and grab it and bring it to her. She'll then go ahead and grab another pebble, fly up, and this female eagle will again drop it, okay? So whoever male eagle will go ahead and catch that and bring it to her. She'll then go ahead and drop this pebble really, really close to the ground to see what male eagle will fly in to catch this and risk his life, right? So the male eagle will swoop down, grab this pebble and bring it to her. So you're probably like, wow, that's females for you, right? They're crazy. They do crazy stuff to get our attention, right? Men, you guys are, if you, if you men are not throwing some hearts up, come on now, you guys are all like, yep, totally. These women do some crazy stuff to get our attention in this and that, but honestly, she's not doing this for, for games. This female eagle's not dropping these pebbles for any games. She wants to know who is risking their life to be her mate, proving that he will risk his life to catch her, to catch her future babies, that he will risk his life to catch them. That is crazy, you guys. This is so crazy. She's not playing any games. She wants to figure out who is the best Papa Eagle and who would possess enough courage in order to save her future babies, their future babies, you know, even at the risk of his own life. This is powerful. Like, it, that's, that's so powerful. When I heard that, I was like, whoa like she she's not settling to the quickest male that's coming to her she is being patient and she's allowing her future mate to fight for her and to find her so let me ask you women how often do you allow men to fight for you how often do you allow the lord to test your future mate and pick out the best future mate for you. It doesn't happen so often. That's like not the norm anymore, right? It's like all of a sudden the quickest thing that comes to you, hey, sweet, how's it going? Or you see a lot of women that are chasing men. No, 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 no. Nope, nope. So I'm asking you women, are you willing to wait for who would risk their life for you and your future kids or if you have kids already? Like I said, most people, hands down, they'll, they'll, just, they'll go and settle for whoever gives them attention and who stirs up these feelings and makes you feel good and then you think it's love and then guess what? You get intimate and then you add in a whole nother ordeal, which Ron Carpenter talks about soul ties. And if you don't know anything about that, I'm not getting into that. You can go search it up. He talks about soul ties and stuff and, and then we wonder why we're all crazy, right? <laughs> 
anyways, so I totally get it though. I totally, I totally understand, um, this whole norm of, of deals when it comes to relationships, because I was someone who went from relationship to relationship to relationship, you know, thinking that, oh, these men loved me. We say, I love you. We throw out this word and it's totally just, no. Until you've experienced God's unconditional love, you will never ever know true love or true wholeness. Absolutely not, you guys. You totally will not experience or understand or know. You have to go to him first. So if you're single, I am challenging you guys to fly on your own and rest in the Lord and pray and be patient and wait, letting God do the testing for your future mate and revealing their hearts instead of settling. Because you know what a lot what happens too is that we'll be sitting here like us women. I get it, you guys. We want to feel loved. We want to feel treasured. We want to feel... You know, we just, we have that in us, but you have to go to him first. But you know what sucks is that, I shouldn't say sucks. You know what really happens is that we're sitting there watching these, these men, women, we're watching these men and we're like, oh, he's got a good heart. He's being so kind to me. He's being so loving, but you're only watching him for a season. And he's probably in a season of where he's got a great job. He's like all happy and go lucky, whatever it may be, right? It's not until you wait. It's not until you truly wait to see and watch them for a few seasons. Because what happens if all of a sudden their job goes down? Or what happens if they have a death in the family? Or what happens when something goes crazy? How are they going to respond? How are they going to react? How are they going to treat you? How are they going to treat your kids if you have kids? Don't just settle and don't just go straight for the first person to give you attention, you guys. I'm challenging you women. Like, no, 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 no. So let me tell you something really quickly. I was, and I'll give you guys these tips. So hold up. Wait for me, okay? Bear with me here. After my divorce... My pastors, like, I mean, I pastored throughout my marriage and stuff, but after my divorce, my pastors were like, hey, you know what, we highly recommend, you know, we suggest that you wait a year until you get into a relationship. Like, you know, it, you don't have to, there's no whatever, but like, this is what we recommend. And I probably, they're probably looking at me because I probably gave them the nastiest looks. And I apologize to my pastors if I did. I'm so sorry. But I was giving them probably the nastiest look because I'm like, are you crazy? Because I didn't want nothing to do with men. I didn't want to get in a relationship. I was like, dude, they all suck. Sorry, men. I know that that's not true. So bear with me. But I'm just telling you how I felt. I was like, I'm done. I'm like, I'm, I don't, uh, no, nope, nope. Mm -mm, we're good. So it was so difficult. It was probably one of the diff the most difficult things that I've experienced mentally going through the divorce, even though I knew the Lord, because, you know, as, as a parent and everything, I had to be strong for them. And it was so hard to kind of show them, Hey, you know what? Mom's hurting right now. We're going through this situation, but yet I have to be, I have to be here for you guys and everything. It was hard. It was so, so hard. And I, I felt so broken, so broken inside, even though I knew the Lord, like just being real. I'm like, what is, what's up with this? I do, Lord, I don't understand. I don't get this. Like, this isn't, this isn't what I expected marriage to be. This isn't what I expected anything to be. But to be real, when you become in a relationship with someone, this, I got in this relationship before I even knew the Lord. And I made compromises through the relationship like y'all would laugh. Just wait. There, there will be a book one of these days. I'm declaring that there will be a book on and you're going to be like, oh, my word, Ashton, you are hilarious because <laughs> I'm telling you there was compromises and everything. So um, anyways, you guys, it wasn't until I was like, I, I have to take time with the Lord. I've got to do this because I don't understand this. I, I don't get this. And I took three days off of social media and you guys are like, whoa, three days? Big deal, Ashton. No, when you're someone who runs a business on social media and you're someone who has been consistent on social media, three days off for me was enough. So 
that was, that was a lot. I took three days off. I pushed away everything else. I'm like, I need to take time. I told my team, I told my challengers, I'm like, listen, y'all, I have to take this time because I'm going to lose it. <laughs> so I took three days <clears throat> off social media to rest in him. And wow, let me tell you, God opened up my eyes. Oh my word, I felt so complete. I felt so whole. I felt loved. I felt a sense of worth. Because I kind of was feeling a whole lot like garbage, you know? So, and you know what he told me? He had me write out a list of my future Boaz because I, I felt it in my spirit that I wasn't going to be single for the rest of my life, that I had a ministry that I would be running with my husband and I and my family and our kids. But... It wasn't something that I was going to settle. It wasn't something that was going to be compromised. It wasn't something that was going to be rushed. It wasn't going to be something that I was going to go search. He's like, Ash and I will bring your Boaz to you. You pray, you be patient, you be faithful, you stay obedient, and you write out your list. You write out this list of exactly what I've got for you. Mm-hmm. That's right. You're like, a list? Really? Yes, I've got a list, and he's right underneath Jesus on my board here. <laughs> For real. So, because if he doesn't meet those check marks on that list, God's like, that's not your man. That's not your, that's not, that's not your Boaz. So, I also, hear me out here, ladies. I also said, you know what? I'm not going to be intimate until I'm married. Because I didn't grow up, I wasn't told, hey, you should wait for marriage. I wasn't. I wasn't, I was told, hey, don't get pregnant. Like, you probably shouldn't, you know, like, we know parents preach you in this and that. But I wasn't told, hey, you should wait till you're married until you have sex. I'm like, that's like, that was, like, it was normal. It was normal in high school. That's what we did, right? No, 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 no. Yes, I'm preaching to you right now. I'm telling you guys because this is real stuff, okay? Like I said, go check out Soul Ties. Look it up. Ron Carpenter preaches about it. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait till I'm married. And I even had friends, you guys, some good friends that were like, are you serious? I'm like, I'm dead serious. Like, I haven't built a foundation and a relationship and anything the way that God's called me to. I'm like... Wait a minute, so you're not even going to, like, test drive the car before, before? Like, that, I mean, that's what you do, right? I mean, even, like, just wait until you're, until you're engaged. I'm like, no, 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 no. Because a relationship <laughs> that's built on, on being good in the bed, like, is it going to be good in the bed or is it, is it bad? Is based on feelings, is based on lust, and is not based on a covenant in which sex should be in the marriage and in the covenant, you guys. I probably lost a lot of people now, didn't I? They're like, I'm out. So trust me, you guys, I have four kids. I have four kids and it, it, it it's, it's not easy. It's, it's difficult and everything, but let me tell you. And all my relationships in the past were not built in the way that this future husband will be built on, okay? So here's my challenge to you women. Because like I said, I talk, this, this, isn't, this isn't for the men. I'm glad that men are listening. But this is for the women. I'm challenging you guys to be like that eagle and to fly alone if you're single and rest in the Lord. And I'm going to give you six tips that I want you to follow, okay? Because you should be testing. The Lord should be testing your future mate. This pebble should be dropping. You know what? You don't want, you don't want your future mate to drop your babies. You don't want your future mate to knock down your kids. You don't want your future mate not to hold you up when you need to be held up. Come on. You're just settling. You're settling for the first bit of attention that comes your way and that's not okay because you know what God says? He's like, I don't, and because some of you guys are sitting there like, well, I've done that. Like, I, I've, this is my past and everything. No, 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 no. God doesn't look at you saying, girl, your past is completely screwed up. Pfft. 
this is the dude that I have for you. Oh, no, 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 no. He's like, Ashton, you are my precious, beautiful, wonderful, amazing daughter. And so are you. And you deserve the best and nothing less. Nothing less. So don't you dare settle because I have your future, Boaz. Like I said, you be patient. You pray over him and I will bring him to you. You are not to search and stay obedient to me and your children in this season. So here is my six tips for you, especially for you women that are feeling alone, you're wanting to feel that love, you're, it's, it's hard, right? If you're a single parent, you're like, whoa, running a home, I mean, I'm paying for my stuff and it's difficult, right? You might be going paycheck to paycheck. So you're like, oh, it'd be nice to have a future dude here, right? A future hubby here because that'll, no, 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 no. No. Number one, my first tip to you is accept the Lord as your savior. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you're like, Ashton, I don't even know what that term means, message me. Message me, okay? And then we're going to talk. I'm not going to talk to you through through text or through whatever I want to talk to you, okay? You can you can search up salvation prayer, but I'm I'm telling you to to message me, okay? That's my first, 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 first tip. I promise you that even if you have no idea, if you're like, I have no idea what this is, you will be so thankful and grateful that you accept the Lord as your Savior. That's number one. Number two, if you could have, if I'm telling you, if you could have the perfect mate, hands down, like I hate the word perfect because we know that that's, no. But for real, if you could have the perfect mate, if the, if you could what they look like, how they would act, um, what their qualities would possess and everything like that. Write them down. Write them down. Because even though you're like, I don't understand how this could happen. Like, there's so somebody not like that out there for me. Oh, you, you're total. Nope. You don't even know what kind of God we serve. Because <laughs> you know what? When I wrote down my list, I had one of my good friends tell me, she's like, Ashton, you're not going to find that. I was like, oh, I know I'm not going to find it because God's going to send them my way. <laughs> like, no, this is what I have. And that's, that, that's it. Like, this is what he, this is what he put on my heart. This is, this is my, this is my Boaz. Number three, pray over them now. You pray protection over your future mate right now. Maybe you're like, okay, I, maybe I'm not, I don't know about, search, look it up, Google, l read the word, get in the word, but pray over them now. Because it's so important that you're pr praying protection over your future mate from any temptations that are coming against him, right? Number four, don't chase. Don't hop on the first person that's coming your train. No, 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 don't, don't, I told you, don't chase and don't hop on the first person that's coming your way because until you've watched them go through, actually, let me tell you this, there will be wolves in sheepskin coming your way, right? You guys have probably have all experienced people like that. They're like, seem like they come off like this and you find out they're a totally different person. That's a wolf in sheepskin. So don't hop on the first person that comes your way. Don't, don't, don't do that. Number five, be patient and ask God to test them so that you're watching them through seasons in their life. Like I said before, that if you're just watching somebody through a season and they're going great in their life, you don't know how they're going to act when all hell breaks loose, when crap is going down. You can, you might only see a, a, a person in that season and you need to watch them through certain seasons. So that's number five. Number six, make a commitment to yourself. And if you have a family, make a commitment to them because God looks at you no matter what and says you're loved, you're treasured, you're precious, you deserve the best. So make a commitment that you are not going to settle for anything less 
than what God has for you. I don't care how tough it is. I don't care how difficult it is. I am, I am telling you that this, your life will be, it's just going to be blessed just by the first just by the first tip that I told you. So I'm gonna run through those really quickly again. Number one, accept the Lord as your savior, if you haven't already. Number two, if you could have the perfect mate, write down the qualities, how they look, how they act, just things that you feel in your heart that you want. Number three, pray over them. Number four, don't chase and don't hop on the first person that comes your way. Be patient and let the Lord test them. And number six, make that commitment to you and your family that you deserve the best that God has for you. All right, well, that's all I have for you guys. I hope that was helpful. And if you guys know women who need to hear this, that need to understand that they are treasured and they are loved, and just to hear that whole eagle aspect of what a female eagle does, then share this with them. Share this on your Facebook and just, yeah. I love you guys. Have a blessed night. We'll see you soon.